Okay, with this lab, we're covering server-side template injection in a sandbox environment. And before we start, if you're not familiar with SSTI, check out my first video that I linked below. That gives you a basic rundown of discovery and exploitation methodology related to server-side template injection. But let's jump right into the lab. It looks like we need credentials or we have credentials for the content manager user. And our goal is to read the file my underscore password.txt. But we're not gonna go ahead and look at what type of template engine is being used because we wanna go ahead and go through the workflow ourselves. So if we jump to the actual application, we do have credentials, so we'll go ahead and log in. And so we need to log in as content manager with the password provided. And remember, first things first, we want to find, we want to see if we have any user controlled input that's returned, similar to cross-site scripting. That's the first step for discovering SSTI. And then from there, we try to enumerate the template version or the, the uh, templating engine in use. So we don't have any reflection of input there. If we go to the item itself, we can see we have a product ID, but we also have the ability to edit a template. So that's nice. So from here, we can see if any type of templating uh, expressions are in use, and we do see dollar sign semicolon. So when we click preview, we can go ahead and look, and it returns the product stock, product name, product price. So from here, we can go ahead and go to hack tricks, look for dollar sign semicolon, or dollar sign curly bracket. We can see what types of templating engines use this type of syntax. So what we want to do is we want to see if we can identify the version in use, possibly via an error message. So can we trigger an error condition in the application to return something that doesn't exist? So instead of product.price, let's see if we can use test testing. And we click preview. Do we get an application error? In this case, we do. And the application error actually discloses the templating engine in use, which is FreeMarker. So now we can use that Hacktricks resource and look for FreeMarker payloads. Control F, FreeMarker. And within FreeMarker, we have a normal, our normal payloads, and then also a sandbox bypass that works on versions below 2.3.30. Okay, we'll see if we can copy this entire payload. Click copy, paste that here, and then let's see if we can just try to run this. In this case, what it's going to do is it's going to execute. It uses this gadget chain to execute, in this case, ID. When we click preview, let's see what happens. Well, we get an error. In this case, it's saying the following has evaluated to null or missing. Actually, what we need to do is we need to delete that testing first because that was that was what was triggering that initial error. So we'll try previewing that again. And we see the application changes. The following is evaluated to null or missing. Article. So it looks like it's trying to reference the article object, but in this case, we don't know if an article object exists. But we do know that the product object exists. So instead of an article, we could try to reference product here. Spell that correctly, click preview. And you can see we get the results of the ID command. So from here, we can execute any command we want. So we can do ls to see the contents of the current directory that we're in. And we see mypassword.txt. So now we can just cat the contents of mypassword.txt. Click preview. And we have this password. And the solution of the lab is to grab the password and submit the contents of the file. So we'll click submit solution, paste the password. I think we had an extra space there. So we'll try that one more time without that space. Click OK. And you can see we got the solution. So from here, we have RCE submitting that password is just the goal of the lab. But at the end of the day, remember, find reflection of input, enumerate the version or the templating engine in use, either with a payload that is known or by triggering an error condition. And then three, move on to exploitation to see what you can do. Well, that's all I got for this video. If you want any more from me, you can check me out on twitch.tv forward slash gar underscore seven. Every Monday and Thursday, I do educational live streams and giveaways. So I'd love to see you there. If you learned something from this video, or if you have any feedback at all, I'd love to hear about it in the comments below. But other than that, hope to see you next time. Thanks again.